have in Huntington's disease, this expansion of a gene that leads to the production of um, a toxic protein or what we call a gain of function um, in this mutant Huntington protein, which then over time leads to um, neurodegeneration and some of the you know, terrible manifestations of the disease, the movement disorder, eventually um, the uh, progressive uh, physical and cognitive decline, the dementia. So you, the, there's this gene that's expanded, mutant Huntington. And then the, what's interesting about this genetics here is that the protein itself, the normal Huntington protein is super important in normal neuronal health, normal homeostasis of the brain and the central nervous system. And, you know, you have the normal protein doing so much that's good, but the mutated protein then doing so much that's bad. And it's this really, we always describe it more in the terms of like this tug of war over time, where you're born with this abnormality, but over time, the stressors on the central nervous system, including this toxic protein itself, eventually begin to overwhelm the system where the imbalance of a wild type normal protein that's so important in normal development begins to essentially take over. You begin to lose the function, if you will, of that, of that wild type healthy protein and the gain of function of the mutant toxic protein begins to overwhelm the system. And then over years and years and decades and decades, depending on how big the mutation is, lead to these terrible um, um, effects that affect so many people, the patients themselves, but as I'm sure you're very well aware, dramatic effects on the family, both in terms of the, the watching the impact of, the, of their loved one, but also with the reality that this is an autosomal dominant inheritance and other members of the family will often invariably be um, affected themselves. So you have this whole environment. Now, therapeutic approaches on, that have been taken are therefore focused on seeing if you can get rid of that toxic protein. And that sort of is where WAVE comes from. WAVE is a, uh, our focus is genetic medicine. So our, our tool that we use to target these genetically defined primarily neurologic diseases are oligonucleotides. And we synthesize oligonucleotides and create molecules that based on our technology, are, we try to make them very specific, very potent, and sort of bring some more of a rational approach to how we tailor um, these very specific or precision medicine type oligonucleotides. So in the case of Huntington's disease, our approach has been to, well, we want to try and keep that healthy protein intact. We want it to still do what it, what it does and what it's important to do. But we want to try and get rid of that mutant protein, that, that protein that is really causing all of the problems. Um, so we've done that by um, using what the literature has told us, which are there, there are very small differences in many people between the mRNA transcript that produces normal protein and the mRNA transcript that produces the toxic protein or the mutant protein. And these are called single nucleotide polymorphisms or SNPs. They're very common um, in, throughout genes, but in the case of Huntington's disease, there was, there was literature from genetic studies that showed that there are certain SNPs that travel alongside the mutated portion of the Huntington gene and thus the Huntington transcript. So our thinking was, well, if we can just target a therapy towards that little unique variation in DNA, and RNA, in our case, RNA, if we can target our therapy to that little variation on the transcript, maybe we can stop the protein from being produced by getting rid of that toxic transcript. And by doing this, this would allow the healthy protein to come back and almost help us in the task, getting rid of the bad stuff, increasing the good stuff, hopefully having a therapeutic effect. 
So that's the approach we've taken. And we do this by designing our oligonucleotides um, to target that SNP and preserve uh, to bring down the mutant protein. And we we had two studies um, targeting two SNPs, which, which we called SNP one and SNP two, which were covered about two thirds of the Huntington um, population. Unfortunately, in those studies, we learned that while we were able to preserve or the wild type protein in our measurements when we did the trial, we didn't have enough of an effect to make it a valid, a valid uh, treatment. So, and what we learned from those studies is that we didn't, those molecules didn't get it into the brain and spinal cord at the levels that we would need them to get to, to have an effect. So we now, we have a study ongoing with a new generation chemistry um, and, and it's called the Select HD study. And it's targeting a SNP we call SNP3, which affects up to about 40% of patients, not affects, it's actually just a, as a, as a, it's present, if you will, in about 40% of patients with Huntington's disease. And in this study, we're using a new chemistry to try and increase the amount of oligonucleotide that gets into the tissues, which would be predicted to have a greater effect. And we're doing that um, in a study called Select HD, which is what we call an adaptive study. So this study, as we are screening people looking for the SNP, we are putting them in the study if they have the SNP. Um, then we are having an independent committee review all of the, the you know, the, their spinal fluid and the concentrations of drug in, in their spinal fluid and the safety of the drug, and then advising us on what that next dose level will be hopefully both through the chemistry and this design to help increase the probability of success in this study. And the study is focused on, the study is focused on um, um, trying to reduce the toxic protein, which we can measure in the spinal fluid, leave the wild type or healthy protein alone, which again, we can measure in the spinal fluid. And we're also measuring other markers of of uh, the health of the central nervous system, something called neurofilament light chain. And through all of these measurements, if we have that effect, we would then bring it on to um, larger, what we call phase three studies, looking for clinical efficacy. So I know that's a lot there, but it's from, you know, again, we're trying to, you know, I wanted to bring you from the time where, you know, we're designing these oligos, we're learning about the next generation oligonucleotides, putting them into a new clinical program to hopefully be able to demonstrate and finally bring to realization the ability to modulate this disease and, and, and improve outcomes.